Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. Thank you for listening. And welcome to day two of my big birthday giveaway that I am doing. If you are listening for the first time, I am doing two giveaways. One was released yesterday. The second is released today. These are two separate boxes of prizes that you can win. Each day has seven different brands or products associated with it. And the way that you enter is through the link in my bio everywhere on my website, newsletter, blog post, show notes for this episode everywhere. If you enter, you get entered for both days. There'll be two different winners, two different prize boxes. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited about it. And it's cool to be able to round up my favorite biohacking gear and give it to somebody for free. Like you can win that full box of prizes. So each box is valued at over 2,200 USD, which is a lot. And so there's a lot that goes into that. And I really suggest if you haven't entered yet, go for it right now. And you'll see on the link, there's different ways to add in more entries. So I would suggest sharing it on your Instagram stories, sharing it with friends. You could enter with multiple email addresses. There's no stopping you with that. You can have your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad, your kids enter. doesn't matter. The, go for it. You know what I mean? If it were me, I would probably enter everybody who I could. <laughs> and I would also do the extra things listed on the website that let me get more entries because it's worth it. So when else are you going to be able to win $2,200 worth of biohacking gear or wellness and health gear? That's insane. And that's 2,200 USD. That's not even Canadian. That's probably about like what, 3,000 Canadian. So I really suggest you enter and I hope you win. I really do hope you win. It was so nice when I did my large Christmas giveaway. It was, a, it was look, like a little different than this, but it was really cool to be able to send free product to the winners. And everyone was so grateful. And I just, it was so nice letting people know. And by the way, this is like the only way that you can enter. It's not through social media. The winners will be announced over email and through my newsletter, they will not be announced or contacted on social media. So it has to be through this way. So go and enter. And today's episode is all about glycanage and glycanage is in the prize box number one. The other brands and other products in prize box number one are Timeline Nutrition, Kineon or Kynon, Bioptimizers, Sensate, Prolon, and Zero App. So you're going to hear me every day kind of go through these different brands, explain them to you, and I interview people from their team, and we really kind of go through it so you can get a little sneak peek of what you could win. So go and enter if you haven't, and enjoy this episode about Glycanage. Glycanage for everyone listening, as just so you know, is a biological age test. Now, this one's really interesting because when I first did Glycanage, my result was much higher than my chronological age. So I think I did it in 2020 or 2021 at the height of the pandemic. And I think my biological age was like, yeah, my biological age was like 10 years higher than my chronological age. I was really upset when I saw that result and it was a lot for me to digest at the time. I also think given the circumstances with the pandemic and COVID and everything that was happening, I think my stress levels were more chronically high at that time, which likely led to a this type of result. So yeah, it was definitely one of those things where it was a little, I was a little salty about <laughs> my results. And I'm waiting on my new results right now. I'm going to find out this week. I'm so excited about doing that. But I would really look into this if you're interested in how fast you are aging on a biological level. This is the test that you want to do. It is a systemic inflammation test. They give you a bunch of resources and support once you find out your result. So you actually hop on a call with a doctor or a medical professional when you get your results and they can kind of guide you based on the questionnaire that you do and give you recommendations. Like they'll look at your lifestyle, they'll look at your diet, your supplements and everything. And then they can say, okay, 
we want to lower your age. This is how we would do it type of idea. Obviously, some people get an age that's a bit lower or you get the same age. So I recommend this for people. I think it's very eye-opening. And what I found in the clients or like friends and family who've done it is that once you've done it, it's very like motivating and it can really light a fire under some people. Like some people need a result that says, hey, your biological age is 45, even though you're 35, you are aging that much faster. And it's because you are stressed or you're not active enough or you are too active and it's counteracting inflammation and these different things in the body in a negative way. So I think it's very insightful. I suggest people do it. I also have a discount code with them. If you're like, Hey, I want to do this test. I don't just want to chance it by winning this prize. I will link that in the show notes for you. And on the blog post that just came out today, my discount code is biohacking Brittany with them. And I suggest you use it. They ship everywhere. So definitely check them out. Glycanage is one of my favorite companies actually in general. And I had the pleasure of meeting them at the biohacking conference in June in Orlando. And that was such a pleasure. So enjoy this episode and I'll catch you tomorrow for another one. We are going back to back right now, baby episodes every day. You know how it is. And if you haven't again entered to win either prize box number one or prize box number two, you need to do it because this is the biggest way. This is the biggest biohacking giveaway I've personally seen. There might be other ones, but I think this is one of the biggest ones. And yeah, it's just a great way to try all these brands, to be honest. So enter, use all your emails, do whatever you want. And I will catch you for another episode tomorrow. Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. I'm thrilled that you are listening this week for another episode. This one is associated with the giveaway that I am doing for my birthday. So if you haven't entered yet, it's now live on my Instagram. It's also on my TikTok account. It's in my newsletters. It's kind of everywhere. So for two days, I'm giving away a bunch of different biohacking and health products. And this is probably the biggest giveaway I have ever done. So if you have always wanted to try different health and wellness things, this is the place to do it. I really suggest you enter and hopefully you can win. And today we are talking with Glycanage, which is included in this giveaway. And this is a at-home test that looks at your biological age. And anyone who's kind of in the health and wellness field now knows how hot of a topic longevity is. So we're going to kind of dive into that. And I have Zori, who is the chief operating officer joining me today. So Zori, welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. Hello, dear Brittany. Thank you so much. I'm very excited to be part of your podcast. You've been a true inspiration for me throughout the past couple of years, ever since I found out your Instagram profile. So I've been following your journey, your healing journey in particular, and I'm very excited to be here today. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that that means a lot. I know we've been connected for a few years, so it's always cool to kind of collaborate and do things together in a new way. And I'm just excited to have you on the show. So for those listening who maybe don't know what glycans are or glycanage is, can you kind of give us an overview? Of course. So glycans are these very exciting sugar molecules that coat every single cell in our body. And people often mistake them with uh, the process glycation, which is the damage to our proteins by internal and inter- external forces. But what we look at specifically is called a process glycosylation, which is a very structured and complicated process that happens within the cell. So DNA produces proteins and proteins get coated by default with glycans that determine the health of our immune system. And uh, why we look at glycans is because they enable the cell-to-cell communication. They are one of the four building blocks of life alongside lipids, DNA, and proteins. And they can tell us a lot 
about how well our immune system is functioning quite early in advance before disease manifestation in the body. Nice. Yeah, we're definitely going to get into the disease implications in the future or like <laughs> later on in this episode. But I'm curious, how does one's glycan profile kind of change over time? And how, like, what implication does this have for the aging process? So as we age, naturally, we tend to get more of the pro-inflammatory glycans in our body. However, this is a process that can be reversed through different lifestyle changes and interventions. And by monitoring our glycan age through time, we can help ourselves, help our bodies to cope and fight the aging processes that happen within much better by adjusting, like fine-tuning our dietary choices, our nutrition choices, our fitness regime, stress levels, and all sorts of other interventions. With time as well, what we see is that women tend to age drastically when they approach perimenopause and menopause, whereas men age more at linear pace. Again, this is something that with glycan age, we can see quite early in advance. So by regularly assessing your biological age, you can determine, hey, maybe you're approaching the, that specific age when your hormones need some support and optimization. And then instead of suffering and getting misdiagnosed with depression or all sorts of other conditions, you can go on hormone replacement therapy and feel yourself again. Yeah, I really like that. So your test is basically a at-home test that looks at these glycans and then you develop a biological age kind of based on that. Is that kind of how the test works? And like what... Yeah, I guess like I'm curious what you find most people kind of experience when they're doing the test itself. Are they nervous about it? Are they excited about it? And then how do they feel kind of after they get their results as well? Yeah, so I could perhaps uh, talk a little bit about my personal experience as well here. So uh, ever since I joined the company back in 2018, so that's five years now, I have been testing myself and Yes, there is an initial fear, perhaps, and some people feel reluctant to find out what their biological age will be. How I see this is sort of empowering information rather than something scary, because knowing more about how internally your body is functioning, you can get empowered and make specific choices. You can fine-tune your entire lifestyle I think it's interesting that you have had such a personal experience with glycans and aging and longevity yourself. And I know you've kind of been at Glycan Age, the company for a few years now. So I'd love for you to kind of take us back to when you first started and what it was like to get tested and maybe some interventions you did and kind of where you're at now with your glycans. Absolutely. Yes. So I started, I joined the company back in 2018. So it has been five years of working with Glycan Age, being dedicated to this mission of expanding the health span, not only the lifespan of humanity. And it's really interesting how the science and the entire the entire field of longevity has evolved even over the past five years. My personal experience with Glycan Age was very interesting to start with. Back in 2018, when I initially tested, I considered myself being quite a healthy person. I was having a healthy diet. I was exercising, not like in moderation, leading quite a healthy lifestyle or so I thought. And I was very much into intermittent fasting. But little did I know that intermittent fasting should be slightly adjusted when it comes to women. <laughs> and I did my initial glycan age test and I was, oh, I can't remember what age I was now, but my test, my glycan age result came back 10 years above my chronological age at the time. And I was completely shocked. It was a true shock for me because I received my results and I was looking at them and I was thinking, 
how is that even possible? I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing to be healthy. And my result is so high. What's wrong? So Nina, our CEO back then, and some of our specialists started digging into my results a little bit deeper. And then a few things came up to the surface. They recommended that I do more thorough thyroid testing. So not the regular blood panel, because that was absolutely within range and wasn't showing any signals of... There was no alert, basically, within my normal regular blood test, because I was doing regular blood tests each year. And all my thyroid TS, the T3, T4, and TSH markers were all in range. So they suggested I should do a more thorough thyroid panel. And they also said that perhaps the intermittent fasting that I'm doing, which I was doing 16 to 18 hours per day, was most likely quite significant for my personal self. Throughout the years, we discovered... And with your help as well, of course, that intermittent fasting for women should be adjusted according to their period. But back in the days, that wasn't so popular. And I was following people who were advertising intermittent fasting being healthy. So I was doing the more of it, (laughs) the better. When I ran my thyroid blood panel, the detailed one, turned out that my thyroid antibodies were so elevated. Some of them were 300 times more than the range. And it was a true shock. It, it was an absolute shock. So I went through a few doctors back then, and some of them, majority of them actually, suggested that I should start on thyroid medication, thyroxine, and just have a pill for the rest of my life each morning with my coffee. Some of them were joking that like I wouldn't even grow. Like, don't worry, you wouldn't grow a mustache for me. Nothing is going to happen. Just take this pill for the rest of your life. And it was really disturbing to listen to all of this and think that for the rest of my life, I'm going to be put on medication and things can only get worse from there. I did some digging and with the help of our specialists as well, we decided that I'm going to start with a holistic approach first. One of the professors that I saw back then also suggested that, yes, my thyroid is inflamed and he can see that there are some changes happening, but he was the only one who gave me some hope and suggested that I should try to lower my stress levels. I should try to change my diet a little bit to adapt it to people who have issues with their thyroid and then retest every three to six months to monitor what's going on in my body. And so I decided to do that. And I'm not going to lie to you, it wasn't a straightaway (laughs) fix. Uh, Behavior change is quite difficult and it does take a lot of time to make such an important decision to change your lifestyle drastically, cut off gluten, cut off alcohol, sugar, processed food, stick to a healthy regime. Yeah, it did take a lot of time, a couple of years. I managed to initially drop my glycan age down to be the same as my chronological age, but I was really fighting hard to get it below my chronological age and see if I could manage. And it wasn't, it wasn't until about two years ago when I decided that that's it. I'm going to cut gluten, I'm going to cut all the processed sugars, processed food, alcohol, and I'm going to give this a go. There are other things that I also implemented alongside this. Not, I think as a biohacker, you know very well that there are so many things that we can do to ensure that we live a healthier life. I started with cold showers. I introduced at least 30 local organic plants within my diet. I'm not plant-based. I do eat meat as well, but I made sure that the selection of plants is broad and is also as local and as organically sourced as possible. There is a really interesting book by Geno Makiyoshi who says that if you eat plants who have grown from that same environment, Basically, they give information to your body that helps you fight the negative effects of that same environment. So throughout the years, 
the past five years, I have been going up and down in my glycan age. Once I started following that lifestyle more rigorously and more strictly, I was able to finally drop down my glycan age below my chronological age. And last year in May, it went down to 30. So I was 38 in May last year, and my glycan age finally came back as 30. I was super excited over the moon. And just to express how how well the test can capture the fluctuations based on your lifestyle changes and interventions, when we started the autumn season, uh, we decided we were going to go through some fundraising. The company was growing. It was a very busy period for all of us. And then I started to gradually fall behind my strict schedule of eating and sleeping and stress levels. And when I retested again in January, my glycan age was back to 38. Wow. (laughs) Just within a couple of months. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, it's when you have an autoimmune condition and you're trying to manage this without medication, many things can go wrong. And you have to really be strict with with everything that you're doing. Yeah, I love that you shared that. I had a kind of a similar experience. Like when I first tested with glycan age a few years ago, I think it was like 2020, mine was like significantly higher than my chronological age at the time. And I remember having very similar thoughts of like, what am I doing? Why isn't this working? I thought I was so healthy. But now like looking back, I'm like, oh, okay. Like I was over fasting. It was the start of COVID and stress levels were like not normal at that time. And and yeah, I don't think I was at a point where I was like actually, you know, embodying the health levels that I really talk about now. Yeah. So it's interesting, like health is a journey, right? So you kind of learn over time what works for you and what doesn't. But that's why it's really helpful to actually get these types of tests done because even if your result comes back not super great like mine, it is a really good indicator and you could actually take that and be like, okay, I need to change what I'm doing. Like instead of being upset about it, obviously like you can be upset for a little bit, whatever, but (laughs) just take it as like a grain of salt and be like, okay, like this is something that is obviously something's going on here. What am I going to do about it? Like, how is this going to motivate me to be healthier and make the changes that I need to? And that's kind of what I did. So I got tested at the biohacking conference in June. I just yep. looked, my my results aren't up yet because I'm, I'm waiting to see what it is. And that'll be the first time I've actually tested since 2020. So I have no idea what it's going to say. But I'm curious, though, for sure. Yes. I don't know. It took me a couple of years to really find out what's working best for me. Now, I retested again in June, and my glycan age was down again to 31 from 38 being in January. I do know what I need to do, but as you said, it's a journey, and you can't always stay on top of this journey. And I guess the important message is to... Not to give up. And even if you have a couple of days or weeks or months of time that you know you have failed yourself in a way, not not like failed yourself, but you haven't been able to follow everything that you would like to do, that shouldn't discourage you and it shouldn't stop you for getting back on track and continuing strong, knowing that what works best for you can be, it's something that we can all follow without hesitation even if we have periods of not being completely healthy and thorough with it. Yeah, I agree. I also think there's something to like taking the average, right? So say you test maybe every quarter for a year and then taking the average result for that year, I think is probably more accurate than oh, I'm just going to test right now and that's my age like and it's like you said like it changes with the seasons. It changes with work and the, and not even work. Like so many women, especially women go through different periods of time. Like what happens when you get pregnant? Like does your test results suddenly go super high? And what about postpartum when you're 
breastfeeding and you're not sleeping, like I'm sure your result is higher at that point, you know? So we tend to see that during pregnancy, your immune system gets stronger. So your result can actually be better during your pregnancy. However, as soon as you give birth, yes, your body goes through a significant time of recovery and your result would be definitely worse than it was before. And it's only normal. We go through so many hormonal changes as well and your entire body goes through so much stress. Yeah, I do have two kids, so I don't know. <laughs> well, so you, the sleepless nights and the stress levels that you go after, like, yes, postpartum, it's very, very difficult. Yeah, that's so interesting. So I think we're going to start trying for a kid in, in the fall, winter this year. And yeah, so we're doing like a cleanse right now and preconception cleanse. And I almost should actually test throughout all of it because it would be so interesting to test like first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, and then postpartum, and then be able to be like a case study and be like, okay, you know, you were... 30 and then you or like 35, 33, 32, something, whatever it is. And then postpartum, you're 45. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you know that this is something you have full control of and you can reverse this, then that's absolutely fine. Yes. As long as you don't get upset with it. And a lot of people tend to also not believe the results when they receive them because they are higher or they are lower. There are specific medications that can alter your result. If you are if you have an autoimmune condition, for example, and you're on specific medications, there is a chance that your glycanage could get altered with these medications. So it's very important when people test to share these details. If the glycanage result comes back as really good and low, that means that the medications you're currently on are working quite well and helping you manage your disease in a good way. That doesn't mean that you can't do more to support your body, change your diet and change your lifestyle. But if you are on medication and you have a disease and you know that you're not quite well, if your glycanage comes back as a low glycanage, that means that the medication you're currently on is helping your body fight that disease. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. How do you think that the glycan age test compares to other biological tests or biomarkers like telomere length or like these epigenetic clocks that are kind of coming out now? Obviously, the more tests you can do, the better. However, not every test can give you a broader picture of what's happening in your body. Telomere testing is okay. However, it gives you the age of a specific cell and we are made of trillions of cells. So the telomere testing is not so reliable when it comes to biological age. It can give you the biological age of a cell, but not throughout your body. Epigenetic tests are quite popular at the moment and they do add some value. What glycanage does specifically is looking at the health of your immune system and glycans incorporate genetic, epigenetic, but also environmental and lifestyle aspects of aging. So there are this additional code, additional layer of complexity beyond DNA, beyond genetics, beyond epigenetics um, that gives more information. And what's really exciting is that not only it gives this additional layer of complexity, but it also shows changes in these structures, sometimes up to 10 years in advance before disease development. So what we see in our studies is that glycan structures change up to 10 years in advance before cardiovascular disease, up to seven years in advance before diabetes. And we have a huge range of disease association now that you can explore with the help of our specialists. This is information that is not disclosed within your report but having the consultation with the specialist really does help to explain what could be happening within your body and what could be causing this elevated level of chronic inflammation that would lead in the future into a aging disease 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And like you said, like lichens have been linked to various diseases, including cancer and even like neurodegenerative disorders. So I am curious, like how are you guys associated at all with kind of research in these places in terms of glycans and the disease process? Is that something that maybe you're looking at now or maybe in the future? Absolutely. As I said, we do have a lot of studies related to cardiovascular disease and diabetes. There are studies related to autoimmune conditions as well. Our company specifically does not is not focused right now that much on cancer disease. The studies our lab has conducted are not linked, at least as far as I know, to cancer that much. We do see some changes within glycan structures, and we know specific glycan structures would change with cancer. But what I remember as well is that some glycans would mimic a healthy state just to hide a disease as well, and that's very much typical for some cancers. So the glycan, your immune system would almost trick you that you're healthy just so it can hide disease or the virus. So it it does take more research for us to really look and dive deeper into this. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I just think it's exciting and I'm, I'm glad that you are involved in that in, you know, whatever capacity you can be. I'd love to give our listeners some actionable advice or tips to really help lower their glycans or their glycan age. And so I think a few things that are really basic that probably move the needle quite a bit are like exercising every single day. I personally aim for one hour of exercise a day, which some people hear that and they think, oh my gosh, that's a lot. And then some people hear that and think, oh, one hour a day doesn't make up for sitting for nine hours at your desk. And I agree with that, but I also move a lot every hour, but like I'm talking specifically like an hour workout or an hour in the sauna or an hour walking is kind of what I go for. And then I also think something that can be really helpful is getting into nature more. And I know these are such almost like boring recommendations to some people, but I think it's like we spend in North America, we spend about 90% of our time. It's actually maybe more than that. I think it was maybe 95% of our time indoors now. And when you go outside, you're getting like the negative ions from the air. And if there's any water around, you're getting access to healthy bacteria. You're getting sunshine and vitamin D. You're like regulating your circadian rhythm. You're reducing your cortisol, which is like your stress hormone. And so there's so many benefits from being outside that I really try to advocate for it. So other than those two recommendations, like what would you say can really help move the needle for people? So I want to add something related to the exercise. What we actually see is that an hour a day of exercise could drive inflammation, that low-grade systemic inflammation that glycan H measures. So if you're exercising that much, So one hour each day and it's, and I'm not talking about a walk in nature, walking in nature or cycling, this is all going to be okay, but I'm talking about moderate or high exercise. If you do that every single day, an hour a day, that's actually quite excessive. And what we see is that people who are on such extensive level of exercise, they actually start to have higher levels of inflammation in their body rather than lower. So exercise should be taken with moderation as well. I think the recommended dose of strength training was like 90 minutes per week, something like that, not more than that, because if it goes beyond the basically expands the cause of mortality as well. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So for me, I do two to three workouts a week. And then the other hours, like a day, one hour a day is like basically walking my dog in the morning. Yes, um, which is lovely. I, I love seeing yeah. your stories with your dog and the cold deeds that you do. This is also extremely important, I believe. These little stressors that help our body fight better everything else. 
for me, one of the biggest things that have, I believe, have moved the needle for me was adding the E30 plus local organic plants. I know this may be difficult for some regions. And again, plants, it doesn't have to be only fruits and vegetables. You can include spices that are traditional for the region that you live in. You can include seeds as well. And just broaden the variety as much as possible and make it a plant choice. Basically, try to plan each week to add something new or add something seasonal to expand the variety of these plants. Because for me, that really worked. And we have a few other clients that tested like a mini self-experiment and they only changed this. They already had a low glyconate result, but they decided to experiment with this diet and see if it's going to lower their glyconate further. There is a guy called Nick Angerer. I'm not sure you might have heard of him. He did uh, for three months just that changing his diet, adding 30 plus local organically sourced plants. And within just three months, he was able to reduce his glycan age further by six years. So definitely something that works and I would totally recommend. It's actually not that difficult if you start including and researching local farms, adding more variety. This is a very easy thing for someone to try and incorporate into their lifestyle. Yeah, I love that. That's such a brilliant idea. I personally, we have a farmer's market here. It's every Wednesday and I go and I buy these sprouts from one of the farmers and he gives me a mix of sprouts. Usually it's four different types. So sometimes it could be anything like pea sprouts, broccoli sprouts, whatever it is. And he has a farm, let's say within two hours of where I live. And that's really helpful for me because I'm kind of in a, I'm on the outskirts of a big city. So it's not super easy, but something that we also have started doing is we've started growing our own vegetables. And I feel like that could really help with getting these plants in that are local, because if you're growing it yourself, Obviously, it's very close to you, but also like you can control pesticide use and like organic and like making sure that they're very healthy and they don't have any spray on them or anything like that. So when we're, you know, we're looking at upgrading to a bigger house, hopefully in the next year, and part of what we're looking for is to be able to have space to have a veggie and herb garden so that we can start producing our own food. Absolutely. And this this is our all great tips on how we can... We can expand the variety. Growing some sprouts doesn't take much space if you don't have a big garden or if you live in a flat, you can grow some sprouts yourself. You can buy, like getting five different herbs is already adding something additional to your diet and it does definitely does help. Yeah, exactly. Well, this has been super informative and I hope this encourages people to get themselves tested so they can get more data on themselves and make more informed decisions. If people want to get tested or reach out to you, where can they do that? They can go on the website. I believe you are going to be able to share a link after the podcast and through, yes, through your um social media platforms so they can get a test we do ship the test worldwide it's very simple and easy to do it's a finger prick test you only need four drops of blood so you don't need large amount of blood it takes a couple of minutes once you dry it off you use the prepaid return postage to ship it back to us the process within the lab is a bit longer it takes about two weeks once your sample hits the lab to analyze because it's a complex chemical process, but once your results are ready, you'd receive them through your dashboard and you'll get the chance to book a consultation with one of our specialists. It's a 30-minute consultation that is included with your glycan H test. And our specialists are all very well educated and they have quite broad knowledge, not only of glycans, but overall. So they can really dive deeper into your individual results and give you personalized advice on what you can do to improve further should you need to. Yeah, I love that you do that. I love that you provide 
the consultations and support that people need. I think that's, I think that's just so smart and so helpful to be honest. It's really helpful. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This was awesome. Thank you for your time. And I know everyone will definitely get a lot out of it. Thank you, Brittany. It was a pleasure speaking to you as well. Thanks for listening to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. If you're interested in finding the show notes or the sponsors for this episode, you can do so on my website, which is biohackingbrittany.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram where I'm most active. My handle is at biohackingbrittany. And if you're interested in working together and you want to email me directly, you can do that. My email is info at biohackingbrittany.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and having you tune in next week.